Hello and welcome to Public Access America. This is just the tip. The tip. Right. Um, I mean, we, we get so much more richer in our lives if we allow for curiosity. And then we decide what is good for our mental well-being. Right. I think the curious rarely care about being judged, right? They're just on yeah. a mission for an answer. Yeah. Oh, it's right. a massive journey, right? And yeah. and, and, and lose, or missing out on that is so why you know you need it you right. can have such a great life and also through that trying out you know if you were to have allergies and stuff even more you should go out and track what you eat and track your mental health and right. see whether there is a correlation if there is not fine but if there is one you might have just found the key to a better life just the tip just the tip just the tip It's time now for something positive. We might be headed to the promised land the of promised speaking land, the truth land, and finding our external liberty once we internally liberate ourselves. The problem can only be solved when there is a kind of coalition of conscience. Of conscience. Because of conscience. that is how it works. This is the beginning, it is not the finale, and that's why we're here, and that's why we rally, 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 rally. rally. We've got to be that creative minority. Creative minority. Creative minority. Find a way to get in the way. I got in trouble. It was good trouble. It was necessary trouble. Frankly, I know we've got to do something. Welcome back. I'm just saying Sunday morning isn't something that I would want to sit there and listen to Jason. <laughs> Come on. But, uh, but we, have, we have great conversation. So what I was thinking about today was this little thought experiment that I had. And it's me with a circle around me. And where I am is my center. And that circle is my mental health well-being. And I, Jeffrey used this word, scope creeping. And I can't get it out of my head. And now it's like this perspective that I use to look at everything. And our mental health is is constantly being scope creeped on by everything around us. And like I said earlier in the last episode, it feels like that's supposed to be. That, that our stress is something we're supposed to deal with and our mental well-being is secondary to that. And so I just wanted to find out if we had any, anything that, so the world is the world, but in our lives, I think we choose certain things that we don't realize is scope creeping. And for me, food was one of those things that I was eating because it was supposed to be convenient and satisfying. And in the end, it was altering my mood. And once I got to a diversity of eating and less additives and preservatives. And I knew what was in my food and it was more of single ingredients. I noticed my mood changed. And when I looked up fructose malabsorption, a lot of the symptoms were mental, uh, depression, um, lack of mood, um, you know, just lack of energy. And then I wanted to let people know because that we covered that briefly on another show and it's one of our most popular episodes now. It's in our top five. And I think people are really interested about that, about food and how it can make us feel better. And we were just talking about that. And I think it's amazing. What I think we need to do is learn to protect our mental well-being. We can still help people while staying in our circle but we can't just let everything into that circle all at once. We have to learn to pick and choose and we need to value that circle as long as possible and as much as possible, because if we protect our mental well-being, we can then help others protect theirs. And like I said on Twitter, better people make a better world. Um, that is so true. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I try and find a way to segue a question in there, but I don't really have one. It's just 
I, I wish people would think about food in a better way. Jeffrey was talking about vegetarian tacos. And there's a whole world that wouldn't even try that because of the word in front of it. And I think that's um, <laughs> that's so sad. I think um, Paul McCartney's daughter suggested uh, uh, like a vegan Monday, you know, just to try it out, try other things out. I never would have tried mm -hmm. um, Indian food if I hadn't just seen that the ingredients were what I was looking for. And so there he is. So for food to scope creep on our mental health, we need to realize that's something we should protect. You know, I would say you bring up that, that great point and, and because I, I will be the first person to say I was guilty of that, you know, vegan or vegetarian, yeah, fuck that. I'm not trying that, you know, but <laughs> then of course, you know, as you know, you decide to be like, you know what, if I like it, I'm not going to ask what's in it or what's not in it. <laughs> like, right. you know, the only, the only thing I sh you should really care about, about, you know, what's in it is if it's something you're allergic to, let's be real honest, you know, right. If the, it's like, hey, does this have shellfish in it? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I can't have it. Or, you know, I I have I, I I think dairy is the biggest one for me. And it's like, you know, hey, if it's hard cheeses, I'm fine. But if there's like a lot of milk and you know regular mm -hmm. sour cream in it, I'm gonna have to pass on it because it's not gonna feel good. But you know. It has, but it has physical effects and mental effects, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like the cheese not only weighs you down and makes you feel moody, depressed, and stressed and anxiety but it also has the physical effects and protecting your mental well-being means finding foods that won't cause stress like that if they don't have to or at right. least allow yourself to pick and choose what you allow in yeah yeah and, and this, it, the beauty is you do have a choice in many ways not not complete i i it's also a matter of finances right but uh you know we sometimes forget how many choices we have and how right. many decisions we make and how often it's just the most comfortable one the next one right the one in that we give too much power to marketing we give yes. too much power to others right where we should claim that and say hey this is my space uh, i'm going to decide what is good for my mood right. and good mood good food or good food good mood and it there is some truth to that um I just want to highlight that massive curiosity that is the antidote to, you know, all these, to all these problems of, yeah, all these can't do, not good enough, all these negatives, right? right? You can overcome a lot of that with massive curiosity. And then suddenly, hey, you will eat that taco, that vegetarian or that right. chicken. The uh, paste, whatever it is, not because you've switched religion, not because you know somebody did something. Right. Just because you're curious, like a child, right? Right. Um, I mean, we we get so much more richer in our lives if we allow for curiosity, and then we decide what is good for our mental well-being. <laughs> right. I think the curious rarely care about being judged. Right. They're just on a yeah. mission for an answer. So, yeah, yeah yeah you're just you, know, you got this point then you you already see the next one you want to go to right it's a massive journey right yeah. and and and, and do, or missing out on that is so why you know you needn't mm -hmm. right you can have such a great life and also to that trying out you know if you were to have allergies and stuff even more you should go out and track what you eat and track your mental health use ear kick and right. see whether there is a correlation if there is not fine but if there is one you might have just found the key to a better life right i felt better on this day because i ate this and when i ate this yeah. over the three days i didn't feel as yeah I, w I ate salad for eight months to get myself to a center to have a baseline mm -hmm. of what my blood sugars and everything were but in that my roommate went from being like salad that's weird to Hey, can I have some of that? To, <laughs> to I just ate kale, <laughs> and that's amazing that people, people will follow your your you know your journey with mm -hmm. you. They'll and they'll pick and choose what they like. We all find these mm -hmm. things, these commonalities, like oh, you like everything I like, and then we look, slowly fall apart as we realize, well, I don't like banana. You like banana. I don't like peanut butter. <laughs> Ew, you like. But that's not what it's about, is it? It's about being no, together. No, it's not. 
Yeah, and you know, the thing is, food also gives you something to talk about. Uh, the, uh, there's a good number of people who complain or say that their mental health suffers when they have to, to go to family gatherings, right? And then they ask them, yeah, what's so bad about that? It's like, you yeah. know, it's always the same. It's like the, just the years change, but it's the same sofa it's the same table it's the same dish <laughs> same just, arguments but grandparents yeah. yeah same arguments same fight you could just you know watch the clock and and it's going to you know right. erupt at some point and and the food is the same because we've always done the same and i think people who they're missing out on that opportunity to divert the all you know the the topics and what everyone already has fixed the you know um opinions on Let's say to something like food, new yep. dish, new dessert, and then let's discuss it and have a, a, a discussion about that. Oh, yeah. I bet there is less struggle. I bet there is less tears. I bet. <laughs> I notice in all those family gatherings, they're only awkward until after you eat. And then suddenly kids are playing, you're sitting on the couch, your uncle's sitting next to you, and you really don't care what he's saying. <laughs> you, you know, it's people let loose after the food but they're anxious before that and it's your family yeah. it's your family just yeah just do it or find people to make your family better but yeah diversify your foods a lot of times though when you're at the family gathering you're like oh i'm looking forward to that pie it's the only reason i'm here <laughs> it is but you can bring look that's true but you can bring presents like Agreed. what i like to do is i bring something from whatever country i'm, um, I'm coming from Aww. a dessert and then everyone is is trying and, and so you can have the traditional dish but you bring something fresh or bring a friend. Right. Just make sure that, you know, like it's not like you have to go to that gathering and suffer through it. You can think of your own, like, what can you change? Right. What can you contribute? That's going to maybe make your grumpy uncle smile. Right. It's, it's most probably not the discussion about, you know, whatever he's, he's fanatic about. Right. But maybe you can divert that attention to towards something cool. What did you get him to eat? I remember somebody <laughs> put beef, blood, and rice in front of me, but wouldn't tell me what it was. The rest of the night, people loved me. That's all they talked about. Jason ate beef blood. Did you like it? Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And then, so another thing that scope creeps on my mental well-being is is tangential to allergies, and that's pain. I noticed mm -hmm. that pain terraforms the soul. That's something that I, it's something I've been saying for a long time. And so food and pain, pain, pain scope creeps. And so I think that's something important to recognize. And I think food helps with that. Exercise helps with that. But a lot of times we feel a lot like a poltergeist, like pain is just something we have to deal with and we have to get through it. We shouldn't take care of our pain. We should take care of everybody else. And then when everything's done, then we'll go and take care of ourselves. But we never really get around to that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Pain is a fact, you know. It's uh, You can't discuss pain away. Um, some people try with, um, you know, uh, try with the watching something or listening to something and that helps. But at some point, really, pain is pain. And uh, mm -hmm. I think you also need to validate that and say, hey, look, I'm in a lot of pain. It's, it's a fact. Uh, this is what is happening. And now I have to brace myself to get through that hour or two hours, days, mm -hmm. months. I, I bow before the people that have chronic pain and mm -hmm. live with it and are still great people, good people. I bow. Yeah. Because I wouldn't know what to do. It is an invisible disability, isn't it? And I know Jeffrey, it is. Jeffrey's partner deals with that. Oh, yeah. On, on just on a <clears throat> daily basis. And it, I really the, admire them for, for being who they are through that. And there yeah. are, must be a release for that. Yeah. You know, I've never actually asked that. I think that's a great question to ask. Hold on a second. <laughs> Debbie's an amazing Maybe we can person. learn something. Yeah. The, yeah. I love that. We also do have people um, um, who have chronic pain use the app to uh, kind okay. of yeah, listen to stuff. Uh, but it's, you know, pain is pain. It's very, very right. well, in front, right? My pain, a lot of my pain was coming from my diet. And then I realized there's a way that you can mitigate the pain. It's always going to be there, It's but it doesn't have to be your master. Like it doesn't have to control your hour by hour 
no, movements you're in the, the boss. day. Right, right. I can take something for the pain and not lay in bed for five hours on a heating pad. I could eat right and not have to do either. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so answer what does is no. Say? Answer is no. It hurts to make art. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Just the standing, right? Standing, mm -hmm. sitting, you know, moving around. Yeah, it, no, it, it hurts to make art. <laughs> Physically hurts to make art. All right. And people are tracking pain on the ear cake app, you were saying? Uh, they are tracking their symptoms. And what is the, the ones that have that struggle, for example, with, with a, um, a chronic pain that's not, not super, super, super hard and right. choose to not take medication for that because it's you know tolerable so what they do is, is they they do breathing exercises because uh, they help uh, we have a range of breathing exercises if they're they're short you can make them slower and faster you can have more repetitions okay um and and by focusing on the breath and 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 really you know with or without music and sound um they 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 can you know, divert the attention from the pain to that. There, there is a few yes. things you can do, but I think it, it depends on how intense your pain is and uh, whether or not you choose to take a medication. Then they track the medication because you need That's to know. That's smart. Yeah, you need to know whether your medication is helping you at, at all and to what extent. And where, until you have calibrated it the right way, you mm -hmm. know, it's better to take notes. It's better to have kind of your stats and your data and your thoughts Agreed. recorded on the app. And then you can go discuss with your doctor. So one, one user does that, you know, it's like she will probably always have pain, but she's a fighter. She's a warrior. She's like, okay, I'm going to find the least medication I need to take right. for, That's the the max, for the max effect. And I'm going to do whatever I can, like with other techniques. And I'm going to make sure I'm grateful for my life, even though it feels so unfair. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, she's she's really strong. She's gotten there. And and whenever she has a really dark day, you know, she can always, you know, she can always throw in more <laughs> if she needs to. Um, right. Yeah. I admire people who can do that and and who have found almost like the the positive side of mm -hmm. of that. You know, she says when there is no pain that's life to her right. like in in in, in it, it when there is moments or hours where she's without pain it has a lot to do with the weather by the way too um that's when when she like ramps up and she does a lot of things and she knows this is so precious it's going to be gone you know in yes. whatever an hour or so and and she she really highlights those hours and she's thankful for these hours where people like you know maybe me and others go like yeah but i mean isn't life pain painless no it's not for, right. for a lot of people it's not right nope yeah. it is not like i've got an old work injury and um for me like i my shoulder has a permanent tear in it it's all mm -hmm. you know that's always going to be there and that you know the weather affects it you know that was always the running joke when we were kids ah oh, you're so old that you can tell the weather's changed by the pain <laughs> in your Oh, yeah. Man. No, yeah. seriously. When when <clears throat> when there's a storm front moving in, those days hurt. They really, really yeah. hurt. Um. I so with the with you know with the weather clearing up here, my shoulder actually doesn't hurt. It it feels it, like I. When I say it doesn't hurt, I mean I can ignore it. <laughs> it mm. always hurts. The funny. Th the th funny thing about me is i will drill down on the pain i will so hyper focus on it that it will be a pain even if it isn't even if it was just a a twinge i will make that cancer <laughs> i will just think <laughs> oh about it God. well i'll think about it until it's so painful and i don't know how to get past that so i really like <clears throat> the ear cake app i'm gonna have to go and get find that function and use it because the yeah. best way to mitigate pain is to get your mind off of it yeah off of it and, and doing something, not just yeah. like passively watching something, do something with yeah. your body and feel in control, you know. And and um, what, what you just uh, said earlier about uh, the weather. So you can actually, the, the app correlates the weather, no raises your mood and your anxieties and your symptoms. So if you have a, if you think that the weather influences, let's say a pain mm -hmm. in your shoulder, um, then you can actually track it. You can see it because it, it tracks the weather and you can take note of it. 
And so wow. may, I, you maybe, you know, you have, you set a chance to prepare. You're not going to change the weather, but maybe at some point you, you move to another area where the weather is maybe less humid. I don't know. Right. At least you have, you can make it as a sophisticated, well-informed decision rather than being, you know, like the victim of circumstances. And, and I, I like that the moon phase, I can't tell you whether there is, it's pain related, but uh, some of our uses you know, they're completely convinced that the moon phases and their mood and anxiety cycles yes. coincide. Of course. When, Ma <laughs> we'll when Mars is in retrograde, people are freaking out for some reason. I don't know really? why, but yeah, for about three months in November, I had about five friends that were just beside themselves with Mars being in retrograde. Just every, okay. every, everything that was happening was because of that. <laughs> Jeffrey, I got a new topic for your next thesis. <laughs> I want to see Jeffrey Weather. study astrology. And moon. <laughs> <laughs> moon, moon phases and mental health and moon phases and pain. That would be one. But that's what uh, I'm saying. You can convince <clears throat> yourself that anything is causing the pain. I think it's good to be curious and reach out and find these other factors like weather and mood phases if you think so or food or um other people or ways you sit or things you do actually you know like always be curious about what's yeah. causing the pain don't assume that it's it's yours. I, so so i wonder karen maybe in this case because you know data analyst brain kicking in here well i love this part <clears throat> Because I'm all about objectivity, of course, being a scientist. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, I need to know that what's happening is objective to what's being recorded. Does the app have a way of actually recording, you know, say day's temperature or something? Or uh, in this case, you know, uh, my theory is uh, like when the weather is starting to affect my shoulder, air pressure changes for example because uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. i because i don't believe that it's the sun or the rain that actually affects it i believe that it's you know the air pressure that's changing that's putting pressure on my body right mm -hmm. and so the, that's the question is is there a is would the app be able to automatically potentially record that based on location settings because yes, then Okay. Yeah. Cause then you would be able to correlate, like, you wow. know, if your pain is starting to spike, you would be able to correlate that with, you know, pressure increasing or pressure decreasing or. Yes. That's the good thing. You know, look, if people uh, allow for location, um, uh, tracking location, we can do that. Wow. And then, you know, you have the whole uh, range of health data that is uh, in, on your phone. Right. And mm -hmm. that, that is sitting there and passively being collected anyway. Yep. And you can put it to work by correlating it with the location, the weather, and much more. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it gives you a much more granular understanding yes. of your own situation. And that's what matters, your own situation. And it's only known to you. Like, again, anonymous, right? Yeah, and, right? And the thing is that knowledge and clarity are power. Mm -hmm. And I wish more people realized that they have a lot of power at their fingertips. They don't have to do the math data scientists, right? right? By themselves, we do it for them. Mm -hmm. But you know, it gives you so much more to choose from. You know, when you're in pain, when you know anxiety hits, when you know, I know for a, for a fact that my mood is really bad when there is too many rainy days in a row. Wow. I know that for a fact. I can see it. the visualization. It's not my like how I feel. It's what it says. Right. right. And what we do is you have the you have the um, the subjective um, feeling where you say, I feel like this. You, you, you know, you have an emoji that you right. uh, select, mm -hmm. but that you also have the voice biomarker that you can't pick. So we have a technology that's automatic that will catch your mood as it is from your voice. Mm -hmm. And there might be a difference between what you feel or you think your mood is. And what your data says your mood is and you mm -hmm. correlate that with everything else and that becomes very interesting so the yep. words i'm fine it's okay are irrelevant mm -hmm. well this is where <laughs> so for me this is where it gets interesting because you know one of the things that we always have to take into account is what most of us call the placebo effect mm -hmm. um, yes. 
it's, you know, if you think you're being harmed or if you think you're being helped, it has an actual effect on, you know, your, your health outcome. It's a right. really yeah. weird thing. And so for people who, you know, like you were saying, you know, with Mercury being in retrograde, you can, you know, the data might line up with their mood going down because Mercury is quote unquote in retrograde. But then the real question is, is it actually Mercury in retrograde that is causing that issue? Or is it because you believe Mercury and you're letting it affect you and you are letting it affect you because Mercury is in retrograde and that is actually having an, um, an effect. Correct. On that. It's, Th- it's the whole correlation does not equal causation. Right. That's true. Correlation is not causation. But the good thing is that if you look at biofeedback, that's your body's language, right? right. And that's less influenced by or biased by something you believe the placebo effect does have you know like it's very can be, can be very strong but the more you listen to what your body's language is saying your biofeedback all right. that the, the the you know it's like drawing a picture of what's going on physically and mentally and it's not just a stick figure uh, drawing it it has colors it has, it has perspective shade mm-hmm. etc and that's what you know correlating different data sources and hopefully a few ob- objective ones does you can still have your own subjective feeling it's it's absolutely valuable because that's what you feel right but yep. you'll be a bit less let's say you won't work with heuristics as much and you might get the curiosity to dig a bit deeper and say, okay, it's maybe not just the moon and blame it on the moon being wrong and you having a bad mood, but, you know, being interested in what your body language is and what your biofeedback says, what everything else says. And there we're again in the curiosity, the massive curiosity that can bridge even, you know, difficult uh, and hard times that you're given in your life mm-hmm. so yeah i'm with you it it, it doesn't ca- causality is not the same as correlation but correlation can teach you a lot right it's true and then and then and that's the other thing that you have is is that you also have this you know quote-unquote confirmation bias well these bad mm-hmm. things are happening because mm-hmm. and that's where it's you know you know objectively speaking right. it's like you know one of my favorites you know favorite examples was is that you know uh, the number of murders that happen in Chicago spike when the temperatures are at their lowest. So, you know, therefore cold weather causes murder. Now that's, you can correlate the two, but that doesn't mean that they're, and, and, you know, if you're like, yeah, you know, it just feels like every time winter rolls around, you just end up with more murder. And it's like, well, you can confirm that all you want, but then you have to look at the, you know, it does that actually, is there actually, uh, you know, a real core, you know, a real causation there. And it turns right. out, no, there's really not. I, I no, re- there is not. I relate <laughs> it to looking at ingredients in food. Like I had 10 foods and I looked for the common ingredient to decide what was causing my pain, causing my situation. And that's how I came to fructose is because it was in all of the foods that hurt, but none of the foods that didn't. And so the ear kick app is giving you 50 different things and you can see the commonality in that yeah. after 30 60 90 days after a year you can start to see that maybe it's mars actually <laughs> but you don't know unless you start right yeah and i i think it's just a good tool to also care right it's mm-hmm. not like oh i you know i uh, yeah i have to live with this now forever no it's right. like hey look you have a sandbox to play in it might not be the most luxurious one and maybe it, it's a bit unfair the way the sandbox is uh, is structured right. but it's a sandbox you don't have to sit and wait until you know bad things happen and to the fructose part um i, I yeah this is a huge topic sugar fructose all that is a huge topic uh, really, you, you guys have to do a show on that uh, because it, there's so much to talk about this. And uh, cool. I'd be happy to, to be part of that. Yay, because, next well, month. Man. Well, especially, well, especially too, because, you know, the European Union has much different, you know, food standards than the United States does. Yeah. And so you end up with that grand question, you know, this is the whole, you know, is our food really, really affecting us or, you know, is it actually something greater that's going on? You know, yeah. I've had my own theories about it. Um, 
just I because don't... you know just because that's that's what I do is I is I look at you know I look at numbers and I go I don't know that this is actually the issue but I do think that there are greater issues that maybe we're not looking at right yeah I I, I like tweeting like I tweeted to Arby's and I told them I think you're the closest chance for fast food to go clean in this new wave like you have the meat you just need to change your sauces and your bread. <laughs> so I try and reach out positively to places because I think clean, I did it to General Mills. I was like, hey, I love your cinnamon toast crunch. Could you get rid of the fruit toast? And like three days later, they were like, we're on it. And I was like, wow, did I just change something? <laughs> yeah, but you know, the thing is that uh, fruit toast or whatever sugar comes mm -hmm. with so many creative names. Right. Uh, by the time you know that fructose is causing you pain, it's got another name and is still in your food. So, right. uh, yeah, but I, let's discuss that another time. <laughs> cor corn syrup is a big thing for me. Yeah, yeah. corn syrup. Lots of other names that you can call it just to have it in it because, it's, mm -hmm. you know, people, people are used to eating sweet. And how are you going to make something sweet if you don't do it some, with something? Right. Yeah. A lot of people in in Europe, at least, that uh, use dates. So you know, like highly concentrated dates to mm. sweeten food or snacks. Right. And then it'll say zero added sugar, and people go, "Oh, this must be so healthy." But, yeah. And then eat it, and it's I mean, to the to the liver, it's the same. It doesn't make a difference. Still it's, sugar. It's still <laughs> sugar. That's what it's fruit still is. Sugar. <laughs> yeah. it's mm -hmm. still sugar. You know, and it's it's it, if you ate all those dates, you'd be exploding, right? I mean, right. Uh, to, to get the sweetness uh, um, that you need for a snack, you'd have to have like half a tree of, of dates, and nobody <laughs> eats that. So <laughs> what you need is the fiber. It's not the the fruity. right chickpeas. Go with the chickpea. I saw chickpeas is good. Yeah. There's a commercial for uh, Dunk Dunkin' Donuts, and they were like, "Hey, come in for our chalk our birthday cake." uh frappe i was like can we just stop trying to shove sugar into other sugars here america <laughs> you know like it's a treat it's not a lifestyle it to me sugar's a lot like cocaine and where it has an adverse effect over you over a long period of time and you just become normalized to it but if once you're off of sugar or off of fast food for a month or two and then you go back you're like oh what is this <laughs> you know? yeah it's just very, very addictive. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, same as other things. But the, what you said before um, was about, you know, like uh, food playing such a huge role. I think it's not just food. It's, you know, it's, it's food, it's sleep. Sleep is, is probably one of the Ooh. biggest causes of, of mental imbalance. Right. It's scope creeps mm -hmm. on our mental wellness yeah. for sure. Exercise, a lot of it is exercise or having, being out in nature, having all these opportunities. Yeah. And then of course, uh, other factors. And of course, you know, if, if, if the stocks are crashing and, and you're scared about, you know, where your next uh, paycheck is going to come from, mm -hmm. that's going to heavily influence your mental health. Of course. That's not, there's no question. What we need to learn, though, is to make sure that not all of those pillars, you know, are shaking or gone. So if we can influence food and sleep, we're, we're going to be better off when inflation hits hard. Right. right. Mm -hmm. There's ways to protect your sleep. We I don't keep yeah. my devices in my bedroom because I want that time. And I, like I protect my resting time. And when. I tell my roommate, when you see me, I'm okay to do whatever you need done. But if you don't see me, don't ask. <laughs> if, I, if I'm not responding, <laughs> if I'm not responding, it's because I'm valuing my my rest. And I yeah, don't I good. don't do that. What I do is I say, oh, I should take a nap, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do this first, and then this next, and then this next, and then it's one thirty in the morning, and I'm saying I should have I should have taken care of myself more, you know. Last yeah. night for me was a great example. I am constantly on my my device. Like it's just between work and my social life, I'm constantly mm. on it. But last night I ended up going over to a couple friends' houses and we played tabletop games. And so the last time I remember looking at my phone was at like 
ten thirty, and then when I finally called it, a, when we finally finished the game, and called it a night. It was two o'clock in the morning, yes. and there I was interfacing with people and not, you know, looking at a screen for hours yeah. on end. Right. You know, and and so it's one of the things that you know I know is next on my priority list, which is putting the device down and interfacing with people for a change uh-huh. or something nature. I used to do a lot. In fact, you know, I would say that was probably one of the, gl- you know, the glorious things about uh, having a cell phone back in, back in the old T nine word days was that, you know, the only thing that you were looking at your phone for was text messages and nobody was really texting because there was a high cost to texting. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it, like my phone literally was just there, but nothing ever happened with it. Yeah. You know, and now it's like, you're constantly on it. It's like, there, there's plenty of upsides. Like I love the fact that if I need to learn something, I can, you know, I've got a device that has the access to anything and everything I could ever want to know on the downside. I'm constantly on the fucking thing. And I don't like that. (laughs) And, and it's like, and you get just, you know, you know, finding out how to break the habit, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I've also got to figure out what I enjoy doing, what keeps me away from it. And yeah, I always love tabletop games. Like they're fun. Yeah, yeah there are, there's lots of things you, you can do without the screen. Uh, you know, we have started, um, <laughs> uh, my partner and I have started to do math. Like really with books. Yeah. I love uh, that. It's, it, just to, yeah. You know, and so we have like these, um, we sleep outside um, in nature. So uh, we have these lamps and then you have the book and I, I need to write it down. I can't do it all in my head. And right. then, so you, you're reading this book in the dark and trying to, to do basic algebra, basic, you know, mathematics. And it just, it really takes your, uh, it takes your attention and, and, and it, you're in there, you're trying to solve a problem. Yeah. And after that, you can really sleep well, but it's important to do it kind of like uh, pen and paper. Yeah. Yeah. So that, 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 that was what games is great. Games is great. And now that mm-hmm. the, you know, the weather is good, you can go outside and swim yes. like, actually here. But what I find, and I, I, I appreciate you, you saying that Jeffrey is, it's so hard to break a habit. There is, thousands of people working on making messengers and, and you know all the tiktoks of this world very uh-huh. addictive and mm-hmm. to keep you in there forever and we're not superhumans we it's it's just too powerful so right. for us to to break it is difficult but we mm-hmm. have you know we've lived a life but for whom it's really difficult is for the children children and teens we're we're raising the most sleep deprived sleepless generation that this earth has seen yeah and this bugs me this troubles me because that's not going to end well and i'm a very positive person very optimistic person but we're raising a sleepless generation all right and it's due to that oh see now this is where things get really interesting because we actually just had this conversation in the house um a few weeks ago Mm -hmm. And it led me to ask a a bunch of people around what's changed because I mean, obviously technology has changed. There's no question about that. But Mm -hmm. the thing is, is that, you know, it's, is, you know, my brain goes to, is the technology the problem or is the tech, is the technology a symptom of the problem? And so for me, it's one of those things where it's like, I, sometimes I feel like we get a little too simplistic. Like, we go, what was the big change that has happened from my generation to my kids' generation? Oh, yeah, these mm-hmm. little pocket little son of a bitches. But realistically, what has changed from my generation to uh, my kids' generation? Or what has changed from my parents' generation to my mm-hmm. kids' generation? Mm-hmm. So anecdotally, I asked my mom, what what did school life look like for you <laughs> as a kid? You know, the question that I had, you know, because this is something that I also saw was how much homework do you have? Like how much homework do you have to do? How did you have to do when you were a kid? I was like, Oh, 30 minutes at most. I'm like per subject. And my mom was like, no, total. That's all we had Mm -hmm. for me. I had usually about an hour to two hours worth of homework to do a night. 
my kids can have, you know, depending on the track, they can have upwards of three, four, three, four, five hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so imagine if you will, you know, think of school like a job, like any other job you go to school for, you know, six, seven, eight hours a day, depending on how your schedule runs. And then you got to come home and do three, four, five hours worth of homework a night. So you've now taken, you know, what we would have considered a normal work day at eight hours and turned it into a 12 hour shift. Mm -hmm. And like any other person and like any other person, we have to have that come down time in order to, you know, get ourselves out of, out of these habits, out of, out of the space that we're in. And so if your social life is supposed to take place, you know, my social life took place after school, you know, either through Mm -hmm. extracurricular activities or, Uh um, you know, my generation had, you know, the first, you know, messenger boards on, uh, on the internet. So we would message, you know, we'd message our friends and, you know, there really wasn't a whole lot you could do. So, With that, you know, the question became, are we giving our kids too much to do so that when they finally, you know, at the end of their 12 hour shift, they're literally trying to do whatever they can to bring, you know, to, you know, entertain themselves, be social with their friends. Right. And, you know, do the things that we, you know, that, you know, Jason, uh, as a kid, when you were playing with your friends, when were you supposed to come home? When the lights came on, the street lights and when, came on. And what time did you start playing with your friends? Oh, I don't know, four o'clock after I did my homework. You know, so like it, you it had was an you hour had, of homework. You, so you had, you know, from you know, arguably four o'clock until, you nine. know, nine yeah. o'clock that you were out doing stuff with your friends. You yeah. were out being active. Mm-hmm. You were out doing things. But now you've got kids that are coming home from school at four. They're doing four hours worth of homework right. and then we're telling them, Hey, go be social. Yeah. Yeah. That, that 12 so hours, is a, the 12 hours is suddenly a baseline though. We're not saying, mm-hmm. Hey kids, you're super stressed because you do 12 hours worth of work. We're saying that 12 hours worth of work is a baseline that you're building on. Now go get a job and eat dinner and shower and find friends and, and be a mature yeah. human being. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's it's t- definitely that, and we all know, and science shows, more you know, more hours do not yield better results. Right. More hours and more homework than not. You 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 have so just so much capacity to learn something new, yeah. and it just becomes futile after a few hours. We know from focus work that four hours of focus work is max you can do per day really deep work right right and everything else is kind of going to have to be shallow it's going to be have have to be something else or recreation Mm -hmm. so the 12 hour shift makes zero sense for nobody it doesn't work so for me the way that i've the you know anecdotally the way that i've looked at it is my hypothesis has been that the technology isn't a problem it's the symptom of the fact that these kids don't have a social life so they're living vicariously through TikTok, through uh-huh. Instagram, through Facebook, trying to connect with their friends there because you, the lights have already come on. It's, you know, they're done for the day and they have to be inside. Right. So that's like for me, you know, I didn't have that issue really, you know, because I didn't have as much homework or later on, I just didn't do it. Right. Or I would do it as fast as I could. And, you know, it was what it was. I just wasn't going to deal with it. And that that understanding of how that has changed is just absolutely wild to me because I can't fathom going from my mom doing maybe 30 minutes of homework. And like, maybe yeah. that was the max to, you know, there have been times that my kids have started on homework at, you know, four o'clock and I'm helping them clear until 11. Yeah. That's really mm-hmm that's messed up. And then you're telling them to go straight to bed after that. They've had no chance to decompress whatsoever or learn Mm -hmm. or put that learning into action. We learn and then we live so that we can put what we learned to use. And if you never live, you never put that learning to use. And what Karen was saying, so if four hours is the normal human baseline 
everything after that is kind of life scope creeping in on your mental wellness. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, deep work. Deep work means really focused work. And you, we know from right, right, homeschooled right. kids that they get everything done in those four hours if they're really focused. Mm -hmm. But what, 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 we're, we're, what schools are doing, and that's not just in the U.S., by the way, it's just piling things. Yes. It's just like a task list, you know, and, and, and how much of that is going to be retained? Two factors to, be, to, to learn well is you have to use as, as much of your experience and your, your senses to do it, and you need good sleep because right. we learn during sleep. We don't learn when we learn. We learn what we repeat, right? right. Um, and so from two sides, and, you know, technology, I, think, I see technology as an enabler, enabler of good and bad. So mm -hmm. maybe it's a symptom. I, I wouldn't. I don't have enough evidence for that, or, or I right. haven't looked at it deeply enough. But what I see is it's from two, it's eating up from two ways, right? Yeah. So the, the sleep part and, and the part of being overwhelmed by, you know, by the book. And uh, that's just not going to work out. We, we see a lot of kids who are not, I mean, my partner's kids were homeschooled and they excelled. And yep. I, as far as I know, yeah. they spent most of their lives on the on the uh, on the boat, uh, swimming, fishing, and having a great fun. You know, touring uh, the world on a boat. And school time was very condensed, uh, but it was enough. You know, it's yeah. not the masses. It's, it's whether you can connect the new things to the old things. And I doubt yeah. you can do that for twelve hours. Oh, great. And that's the other thing too, is, is that anecdotally speaking, what I have watched in the days, you know, from the pandemic to now, uh, where we're at, where, you know, kids are back in school, like my kids would get all their stuff done, but then, you know, they would have, you know, homework to do or, but they were able to focus and get that stuff done because their class time was limited from 10 to two. Right. And then they would have, you know, they would get some stuff done afterwards they wouldn't have a whole lot of time so then yeah it would take up some of their electronic time but overwhelmingly they were craving interaction right. now you know that they're going to school a whole bunch and they have a bunch of homework when the days that they don't have homework they are desperate to have you know a friend over and so yeah they're sitting here watching movies or watching tv shows but they're interacting with each other. The TV seems to be more like white noise most of the time. Right. And even still, at some point, they all will like, like, you know, uh, their friend and, and our youngest ended up getting up and they're like, let's go pick mushrooms. And they left to go pick mushrooms. It was the crate. I was like, wait, who the hell does that? And then it was like, you know what? Go do it. Go, go be outside. Go do yeah. the thing. And they brought back like freaking five pounds worth of you know oyster mushrooms it was right. really cool but mm -hmm. that has not been something that they had been able to do more, and import the more importantly they're learning who they are but know? even crazier is is that there's the kids themselves without any discussion on this uh with them what they have also come to figure out on their own is, is that their teachers are complaining about how much work they have to do after school because they're like, oh, well, I have to teach all these classes all day long and then I have uh -huh. to grade all these papers. But then the teachers themselves have these expectations that they do all of this homework later. And it's like, y'all are just, you know, you just are hurting yourself in this one because it's like, mm -hmm. you you know, as educators, you, you have to understand this concept of, you know, there is a point of too much but also, too, now you're doing it to yourself. So then the question becomes, yeah. what does quality of education look like when you have your educators being just as sleep deprived as the kids? Yeah, yeah and it's, it's ma mainly the standardized um, uh, school plans and everything because it's now got to be right. the same everywhere. So you have to you're basically, you know, uh, trying to hit those milestones and on those KPIs um, where uh, before it was in my childhood, it was possible for a teacher to convey a certain topic the way they wanted, what the, the, the results needed to be in. But if they went out of the forest to explain plans, they could do that. They yes. didn't have to do lesson one, two, three, and then take exactly the same test that is rated at the same exact way. You know, it's I, I like standardization because that that helps us compare. 
But in some ways, it can also be hurtful because then you become the slave of whatever the system wants you to do. Agreed. And maybe there's better ways to, to teach math. Maybe there is a better way to teach a certain topic. For somebody, um, for for the individual, we learn things differently, right? Yes, right. definitely. definitely. Well, I don't learn math the way Jeffrey or you learn math. God, no. Right. I bet. <laughs> well, even like, even like my kids have come to that whole conclusion of they're like, how often do you have to take tests? And I said, only when I'm trying to get a certification. And they're like, well, how often do you get certifications? I'm like, maybe once a year I do some certification or recertification. And they're like, well, how do you prepare for that? I'm like, some of it's open book. Some of it's just, I've worked with this stuff for so long that I know it. Right. You know, I, I've always subscribed to the Einstein methodology. Don't memorize what you can easily look up. Right. The reason why is, is that if you use it enough, you will memorize it because you yes. will be working with it constantly. And there is no sense in punishing people for having and using the knowledge that is at their fingertips. I mean, one of the things that I always said about my master's degree that we all said about our master's degree when I was in school was, is that it's not that we knew everything. We just knew how to use Google better than most people did. And we knew how to take what somebody else had done and then manipulate it to meet our own needs. But then ask your own questions in a more exactly. advanced way. Exactly. Yeah. And that's and that's literally it. So then my kids are like, well, then why do we have to do that? I just went, that's a great question. Why do you have to do that? Like, because, you know, real life is, is that most of our work is project based. It's like that's nobody shows up and is like, all right, I need you to complete this test and let's see how you do. Right. It's it's hey. I need you to build this thing. I need you to draw this thing. I need you to complete this set of tasks. It's hitting the fan and we need it solved now. <laughs> oh, and, by, and and nobody goes, oh, and by the way, you can't ask for help or you can't use a book. Right. Or you can't yeah. look something up. Nobody does that. Why? Because we're expected to have all of this knowledge at our fingertips and mm -hmm. actually use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and be so, actual, you know, actually assess and actually learn and actually perform right yeah but to the use of the of that technology that is so helpful you know i i find it difficult to expect young people children teens to you know handle a supercomputer in their pocket that's actually not built for kids. It's it's built for grown-ups and, and we grown-ups have our, our problems with it and, and yeah. you know not overusing and, and not becoming completely uh, you know an addict to uh, to social media, etc. So it's it's to me it's it's really difficult and, and the only way to really help the kids is to to put very clear rules in place and to help them stick yeah. to those routines without you know without labeling certain mm -hmm. behaviors give them right? other options than the phone what yeah I, what i see it as is that circle with me in the center actually bringing all of that stress directly into my mental well-being via the phone like do i have work yes and now it's right here always right here there's always an email there's always a message there's, there's always, always a notification but mm -hmm. if i put that away 12 hours later, yeah, there's still going to be an email, but I protected my mental well health. I think kid, yeah. kids are going to start using technology in a radically different way that doesn't scope creep. You know, I think they're going to have, Hopefully. they're going to have <laughs> enough of this, you know, they're, they're just, they're going to get through school. They're going to change things when they grow up and there's going to be a shift because that's the way the world works. We, we see the food table one way and then we turn it upside down and say, oh, that's how it should look now. And we constantly go back and forth and kids are going to change the world. I loved having Jay on the show for that reason because when I brought up school shootings, Jay was like, what? Like, I think we did a drill last year. It's not an issue for them, but inclusivity and non-binary options in school are what matter to Jay. And we're sitting here at a national level in the cloud saying, this is what matters to kids. And kids are like, well, no. <laughs> and if you're not going to listen to us, we're just going to do our own thing in our own way. And you'll never know how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. I I think there's gonna there's uh, there's gonna be change. We just don't know what. And uh, and we really need to support our our future, our young people mm-hmm. yeah. in any way we can, right? Without pa- patronizing, but also helping them set boundaries and 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 yes. and keep routines and rituals going. I think they can't be expected to do it all on their own, but they should absolutely co coach choose and co you know co work with us to to put a framework in place that works for them. Yeah. So you know it's not just simply saying oh this is bad for you. We need to make sure that they have a way to break the the, the addiction or break the cycle of whatever it is. Right? Yeah. That's or, that's that one thing that to. I've always talked about with them is is managing expectations. Because, yeah. because reality and your expectations are, are never the same. So for example, like here, you know, where we're looking at, you know, a potential national repeal of Roe versus Wade, mm-hmm. you know, we had, we had, you know, which is, you know, the protection of abortion rights uh, in the U S we had, you know, we had a bunch of kids walk out. And of course, you know, my kids decided they wanted to be a part of that. And personally to me i'm the kind of person that says hey if this is important enough to you that you're willing to walk out of class and march to the capitol hey you know go be heard now let me manage let me tell you what some expectations are that you need to manage Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. you know you're going to learn this it would be more helpful if i could help temper some of that And, you know, let you know that, hey, there's a good chance that you're going to run into people who are going to be counter protesting. There's a good chance that they're going to try and bait you into a fight. There's a good chance that they want someone to be violent with them so they can be violent back or just be violent, period. And there's Mm -hmm. a good chance that you're going to hear some really terrible stuff. There's a good chance that you're going to hear some really empowering stuff, Mm. you know, but that in the end, you know, you need to understand that you're going to you're going to encounter a whole realm of experiences and you may not know what to do with that so here's my advice now go forth and you know you have at least a standard set of expectations that you can now go out and go okay this isn't quite what he was saying but i understand where that was coming from or oh hey this is really scary did I come up with a plan to get out of this scenario? Oh yes, I did. We talked right. about this, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I said, you know, you can take these lessons and you can apply it to any time that you decide to, you know, march on the Capitol, for example, mm-hmm. you know, or if there's another protest you want to do, or just even in your general life, you know, if you're out somewhere and you feel like you're not safe, you know, what is your plan of escape? For example, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. things you have to think about. Yeah by managing those, helping them manage those expectations without the idea of micromanaging their existence, you Mm -hmm. now have a set of kids who may not have all of the relevant experiences, but they have at least some greater knowledge on what to expect and they can make their own decisions and learn from there because that's how we all did it. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I think a boundary, yeah. a boundary to a child is a prison, but a boundary to an adult is a freedom. Yeah. I mean, again, those are such great opportunities, invitations to to work something out with your child, yeah. you know, uh, and, 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 and grow together and, and, and get to know each other better through that so that you know we can be thankful for all these discussions we need to have <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. around technology around uh, phones around politics there is kids are never too young too young for uh, po- politics or for political discussions never right. nope. there is never a topic that you can't explain in a child like way to yeah. them so that they can be part of this um, and you know I, I live in a direct democracy and i I think we can't start early enough to involve them in mm-hmm. discussions like right. that. And we have a duty to do so. That the, yeah. the, that the idea is choices and freedoms. Yeah. Well, and also yeah. too, like we've talked about on here before, is, is that if you ignore what the children are thinking and feeling and not engaging with them and not yeah. incorporating their thoughts, they become voters who go, you wouldn't listen to me. I'm going to do my own thing now and whatever you get is what you get. Yeah. 
or yeah. or emotional a, voting or yeah. a gun or a gunman that didn't tell you what he was going to do and takes out 19 kids yeah yep yeah um yep. yeah we, we got to pay more attention and i think in all of this a living wage changes everything that's my final statement like i don't know how a parent with three dro- three jobs is going to help raise a child in the way that we hope that they are raised yeah i don't think that is possible to be honest it's all those pressures Mm -hmm. it's all those scope creeping life pressures that we're told we should just deal with your kids should just deal with them put your kid on your put put your kid in front of the tv get back to work because we need this done you know, and it just mm-hmm. affects everybody. Everybody mm-hmm. suffers because life scope creeps because we don't protect our own well-being in in essence, protecting others that we care about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Let's change it. Let's, I don't know let's how exactly, it. but I'm not going to give up. <laughs> well, I think the idea is to use the ear kick app and create the best person you can be. Like try yeah. it, try it for a year, and then at the end of the year, see if you've improved. Life is nothing but a journey of trying things and being curious. If you're just going to sit on a couch and assume you know everything from age 12 to age 80, you're no human. Like a person, <laughs> like a somebody that does nothing is a nobody, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And the magic is do it in small steps. You right. Know, like it, it takes one minute at most yeah. per day. And if you really do it for a year, I think the title will be, I think you start with a noob and then you become like the ultra uber man, uh, <laughs> mensch, uh, or, you know, king, maxima, whatever. I don't yeah. know if that, that, the, that, that, that the level is, but you'll be in a league. And I want to, and I want to meet you if you do that for a year. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Thank you all for being here. Did you have anything to wrap up on anybody? I think for me, the biggest wrap uh, is going to be that all the topics that we talked about today, I really hope that, you know, this generation worth of scientists takes, you know, what we've talked about, take the data that they can get that's going to be available to them. And we start to actually fix some of these problems that we've seen that we've come up with, because if we don't make the changes now using um, informed decision making through good data we're going to get changes that really suck and we're going to not we're going to end up in a worse place than we are now yeah i agree let's 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 do more rational and data-based data-driven decisions and less emotional ones yeah. let's but also too let's let's take those emotional pieces but then you know, use the data to say, Hey, look, you know, it's not that, you know, either you're right or it's not that you're wrong, but because that's what science does. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we're not right, but we found something. I love it. Thank you for the baby formula, by the way, Zurich. (laughs) 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 We're going to have Dan on next month, by the way, for everybody talking science. He's been honeymooning for the last month and he emailed me to told me that. And I told him, I'm kind of angry at you for emailing me about that. <laughs> so he, he hasn't emailed me back. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Karen. You're the most amazing person. I told my friend Kai, I said, you have to listen to her episode. She sounds like a smile. And Kai was like, I love the way you describe people. And you do. Oh, you're just, oh you make my giant, day. You're I just sound a giant like a... smile. It's oh, true. my gosh. Thank you so much. You guys are true to me. Yay. Thank you so much. <laughs> and we will we'll talk to you next month. Yes, absolutely. Yay. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. To those who would tear the world down, we will defeat you. This is our moment. This is our time. To those who seek peace and security, we support you. Yes, we can. And to all those who have wondered if America's beacon still burns as bright, tonight we prove once more that the true strength of our nation comes not from the might of our arms or the scale of our wealth, but from the enduring It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. As 
not yes, we can. what your country can do for you. I have a dream. Ask what you can do for your country. My poor little children. Yes, we can. One day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Things Everybody, are bad. Are Everybody bad. knows things are Everybody bad. Knows things are It's bad. a depression. It's in this depression. lifetime, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody except yourself. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. To public access America. Yes, we can. Sunday live stream time, YouTube. I wanted to run out of that tunnel for my dad. On Twitter. Apple Podcasts. Stitcher Stitcher Smart Radio Public. And Spotify. Yes, we can. Public Access America. History in the making. Making history in the making. With Eversense, the long-term sensor helps me spend less time dealing with my CGM. I only need two sensor changes a year. If you're on multiple doses of insulin, you might greatly benefit from the Eversense E3 CGM system, the only continuous glucose monitoring system that lasts for up to six months with one sensor. Still doing frequent sensor changes? Break free today with Eversense. For important safety information and to learn more about Eversense, please visit eversensediabetes.com safety. This episode is brought to you by Verizon. Get a Verizon Business Unlimited plan from the network businesses rely on. Hey, Monica, with 5G Ultra Wideband in many more cities, you get up to 10 times the speed at no extra cost. Hello, downloads in no time. Plus, unlimited premium data and hotspot data to keep the signal flowing and your teams going. Come in or book an appointment with a Verizon business expert to find the right plan for your team. 5G Ultra Wideband available in over 1,700 cities with Business Unlimited Pro 2.0 smartphone plan. Speed comparison is to median Verizon 4G LTE speeds. Download speeds may vary depending upon network and coverage conditions and content optimization for 5G Ultra Wideband.